Hey, Ben. <coughs> oh, so, ang tingin niya sa panyo ko. Walang kinalaman to sa pagkatao ko. Okay. Uh, nakita ng panyo. Shall we all stand please and turn your Bibles in the book of uh, Genesis. And thank you. Praise the Lord for the song. And I believe that since morning, we have been blessed by the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And, uh, we'll study the whole chapter, but we're going to only read from uh, verses uh, 22 up to 32. Are you there, po? Genesis 32, po? 32. Apo. Genesis 32, verse number uh, 22 to 23. Amen. Are you there, po? Let us read this uh, in unison. Please begin. And he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two women servants and his eleven sons and passed over the ford Shab. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had. And Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled the men with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that his he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him, and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. And as he passed over Penuel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. Therefore the children of Israel, not of the senior, which rank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh, unto this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh in the sinew that shrank. Shall we pray, Paul? Our loving Lord, uh, once again, uh, we pray, uh, pray, Father, that you will uh, help me, Lord. I pray that you will uh, give me the wisdom, Father, power, the authority, Lord, that comes from you as I deliver your word this afternoon. I pray, Father, that you will continue to work in our midst and please be the one to work in our lives, Lord, and help us, Father, to be a, a victorious Christian. Be the one, Lord God, to lead us as we continue to study the book of uh, Jacob. Be the one, Lord God, to uh, give us the understanding. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Po. Please be seated. Yay. So one brother, John, asked me to uh, prepare. Uh, parang gusto kong tagihan kasi uh, I'm really not feel, feeling well uh, a few days ago. But uh, naisip ko. I go, that this is an opportunity to uh, share the word of God. And I said to myself, Pastor Joel, nga, uh, minsan, two times, three times, he was preparing for uh, preaching. And he was doing it in the house of the Lord. And uh, I believe uh, we can learn something from this chapter this afternoon. Amen. And uh, we've heard many uh, uh, preachings about this uh, topic here. But let us see what we can get. I don't have any title. Uh, you will be the one to add a title <laughs> when you reach home. Amen? Amen. Yeah, well, so, uh, as we continue to study the life of uh, Jacob, we can see his uh, struggles from time to time. Amen? So, it been, uh, it's already been uh, 20 years that Jacob fled uh, from Esau, his brother, and then went to the place of Laban. And now, Jacob is now fleeing Laban. And now only to be confronted by his brother, Esau. Now, after 20 years, now, Jacob's past has been uh, cut, was catching up with him. And he was really afraid. Now, sometimes it's really uh, uh, very uh, convincing 
we try to convince ourselves that we can escape from those mistakes that we did before. But we have to understand that uh, we try to forget our mistakes, but our mistakes don't forget us. But praise the Lord, God took all of those things from us. God has forgiven us, amen? And we have to forget all of those things. And try to move forward, move on, and try to ask and trust God that He can do better things in our life. Amen? Now, those things that we did in the past, we could learn something from them. And I believe in that. Amen? There is no perfect person that can stand here in front of us right now that we can say that I don't have any mistakes in life. Because everybody can commit mistakes, amen? And everybody is uh, been, uh, uh, I mean, uh, molding by our God. And everybody is uh, being helped by God in order for us to move forward in our daily walk. Now, as we continue here, as we study Jacob's actions during the crisis of time, you can also see here his illustrated life, his conflict, Occasionally experienced between what they call trusting and what they call fear. Uh, I mean, from uh, faith and fear between trusting and scheming. And here he comes now asking God for help. And then after that, he is making his own move. And most of the time we've been doing that. That is why crisis in the lives of an individual doesn't make a man. But... It shows what a man is made of. The point number one here, let's go to verse number one and two. It says here, And Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. And in verse two, And when Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's host. And he called the name of that place, Manaim. Also knows what he called two camps. Point number one, there's what he called Jacob's protection. Amen? Jacob met the angels of God at Menaim. As we can see here. No. Uh, bringing all of his family here, we can see that the, Jacob realized that God was with him. And there was what he called angelic protection as well. It says here in verse 1, and the angel, I uh, mean, verse 2 here, this is God's host. Now, literally here, we can see that Jacob observed, and seen, and had the hand of God that was with him. Observed in a double camp. He was not alone. Amen? Now, we can see that as well in our daily lives as well. God is always with us. There's always protection that God has been providing for us from time to time. Amen? God had a camp of angels and with him at Mahanaim, which means two camps. No, it was not as if, it God, as if God was only with Jacob during the time. But we have to take note that God was with him all the time. Amen? Amen. The entire time. And that has made an encouragement for Jacob. Now, talking about the angels. Now, I know most of those, uh, most of you who've been studying Bible college, uh, we've been studying what they call angelology, or others says angelology. They are higher beings than us, but they are ordained by God to minister to us. Hebrews 1:14, please. It says here in Hebrews 1:14. Now the Bible tells us, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to them for them who shall be heirs of what? Salvation. Another thing here. And they minister to us even as they ministered to the Lord Jesus Christ. In Matthew 4 verse 1, please. Matthew 4 11, I'm sorry. Matthew 4 11. Now if you could remember when Satan tempted the Lord Jesus Christ in the wilderness, amen? Now, it says here, Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, the angels came, and what? Ministered unto him. The angels, amen? And the same thing as what happened in 2 Kings chapter 6, 15 to 17. Now, when the king of uh, the soldiers from Syria arrived, okay, in the uh, 
place where the man of God was. Now, the, the servant of Elisha was so scared. He was so afraid because of the number of soldiers that uh, surrounded them. And then Elisha prayed unto God that his eyes will be open. Now it says here, verse uh, 15. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host come past the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened his eyes of the young, opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was what? Full of what? Horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. That's what, that was God's protection, amen. You know, I remember a story of a uh, of a missionary who was a Scottish missionary who was uh, a uh, who went to the Hebrides of uh, Ireland in the South Pacific, uh, John Payton, uh, one night, uh, their uh, mission's headquarters was uh, uh, surrounded by the, uh, the natives who were cannibals during those days. And then uh, Jacob, uh, John Payton and his wife prayed all night. They prayed until they the, the morning came that those uh, uh, natives uh, left that place. And then after a year, the chief of that uh, uh, place got saved and he became a Christian. And, Jen, and then John Payton said, uh, what, what did you do that night? Why was it that you suddenly left? Oh, what happened? And then uh, to uh, missionary John Payton's reply, uh, uh, I mean, he was so surprised that the chief of the village says, he said, who are those men surrounding the uh, mission's headquarters during that night? He said, no, only me and my wife were there. No, we've seen uh, uh, big men with the shining uh, uh, clothes uh, holding uh, uh, swords and armors. That was his testimony. And we believe there, again, that that night in that Hebrides island, there was certainly a double camp. Amen. Now, the angels God of God met him. Now, this is a very good revelation of God's presence and care for Jacob. Amen. And Jacob finally separated from Laban. That's why it says here that separation from the world brings greater insight to the believer. Why? Because God will not give you those insights. God will not uh, give you those directions until and unless you will not be separated from the world. Yes, we are in the world, but we have to what? Look forward and put our eyes on the Lord and not on people. There was what he called God's protection. And point number two says here, verse number 3 to 8. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother. And to the land of Seir. And unto the country of Edom. And he commanded them saying. Thou shalt ye speak unto my Lord Esau. Thy servant Jacob saith thus. I have sojourned with Laban. And stayed there until now. Verse 5. I have oxen and asses. And flocks and men servants. And women servants. And I have sent to tell my Lord. That I may find grace in thy sight. Verse 6, And the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to thy brother Esau, and also he cometh to meet thee, and we had four hundred men with him. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people that was with him, and the flocks and herds, and the camels into two bands. In verse 8, And said, If Esau come to the one company and smite it, then the other company which is left shall escape. Now it was so sad here, that after God's protection, that after Jacob saw the, uh, the presence of God, he comes now, Jacob's, point number two, Jacob's fear in unbelief. Jacob said to his uh, servants, please go to Esau, my brother, 
And I believe Jacob was really, really scared. Now, Jacob was also trying to, uh, he was seeking to reconcile with his brother. Remember? 20 years ago, his brother Esau said, his brother Esau swore that he will kill Jacob. But again, he sent a message humbling himself. He said to his, to his servant, Be still, Esau, my brother, thy servant Jacob is coming. That's what he said. Now, in verse 5, we can see here in this text, I have oxen, I have asses here, I have donkeys, I have flocks, and I have what? Servants, male and female. So we can see here that Jacob isn't bragging here. No, J I mean, he wants Esau to know that he is now a man of what? Wealth. And he doesn't need anything from his brother. Amen? We can see that. We see Jacob is trying to get the inside of Esau here. And even his, his, his brother's concern. But what happened here in verse 6? He also cometh to meet thee and 400 men with him. Now when his messengers returned, Jacob heard the news. And what happened here? His blood just ran out of coal. Esau was coming to meet him with 400 men. Imagine. Jacob could not bring himself to think the best of Esau. Because he was convinced, uh, convinced here that those 400 men that was with Esau is coming to what? Destroy him. He was really advanced. And that is our problem most of the time. Remember what happened to those twelve, uh, to those ten spies that were sent by uh, to to spy out the promised land. When they returned, it's full of what they call imagination, full of an advance. Now we can see here, verse seven. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and what distressed. Remember that. In chapter 31, verse number 36 to 42, when Laban confronted Jacob, uh, I mean, he boldly stood up to him and spoke his mind. Let us read it there. Genesis 31, 36 to 42. And Jacob was wroth and chored with Laban. Because Laban was chasing the, uh, Jacob. Okay. And Jacob answered and said to Laban, Why is, What is my trespass? What is my sin? That thou hast so hotly pursued after me. But we're not going to read those old verses there. Now we can see here, he was, uh, uh, I mean, he, but he was uh, really a, uh, he has the courage in facing what he called uh, Laban, but for his brother Esau, he was really afraid. Why? Because he knew that he was in the right with Laban. But with his brother Esau, he was in the wrong place. Amen? That is the problem here. That's why in a similar way, many Christians are crippled by their past. Their past sin haunts them and they have difficulty believing that Jesus really what? Settled it all. Amen? And that he wants them to what? Move on and what? Trust him. Those past were all gone. Amen? We can return to those past. Now what we're going to focus on right now is the future. Amen? Those things that what we can do for the future. Now remember, as believers, that is not the proper and the right attitude. Remember, the Bible tells us that, that God has given us the spirit of fear. Amen. Now, I mean, uh, I mean, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of what power? Amen. Amen. What can we be afraid of? If God before us, who can be against us? The Bible is very clear. But what happened here before Jacob left? 
In Genesis 27 verse 45, please. Genesis 27, 45. Until thy brother's anger turn away from thee, and he forget that which thou hast done to him, then I will send and fetch thee from thence. Why should I be deprived also of, of you both in one day? Now, Jacob has all the reasons. Because I've, after 20 years, Rebecca didn't even what send somebody to him. Giving information of what happened to his brother's anger towards him. Amen. He didn't know. But again here. When faith is clouded out by fear. We're prone to start scheming and trusting our own resources. And that is the problem. Believers who are walking by faith need not fear the enemy or whatever bad news may come their way. Psalm 127, Psalm 112, verse 7. He shall not be afraid of evil things. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. But what happened? But Jacob, according to Genesis 32, verse 7, he was greatly what? Afraid and distressed. And then what happened? He therefore reverted once again on his old policy of what? Scheming once again. Instead of remembering God's camp, instead of remembering God's angelic armies, God's host that showed to him at Mahanaim, Jacob, what? Divided his camp into two bands. Amen? So that if one will be attacked, the other group will be, oh, the other group will survive. But again, you have to take, to realize that it was a very poor strategy. Amen? Against 400 men, Instead of choosing the right and the proper way of maintaining the, ori the original what? Two bands, his company, his company, and God's what? Army. And trust the Lord to see him through. Point number three, verses 9 to 12. And Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, the Lord which said this unto me, Return unto thy country and to thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. And I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth which thou hast showed unto thy servant. For with my staff I passed over this Jordan, and now I am become two bands. Verse 11. Deliver, uh, deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau. For I fear him, lest he will come and smite me, and the mother with the children. And thou saidest, I will surely do thee good, and make thy seed as the son of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. Point number three, we can see here Jacob's prayer. Amen. According to the word of God, Jacob is... Prayer is one of the greatest prayers recorded in the scripture. But, and yet, it was prayed by a man whose faith was very weak. Every statement in this prayer indicates that Jacob had a profound knowledge of God's way and God's character. If we're going to read those verses there. And yet, he was praying in desperation and not in confidence. Now, how many of you here nowadays, you've been praying to God, but you don't have really that confidence that God will answer your prayers? We're guilty of those who ask, amen? We're guilty of those. Verse 9 says here, Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, the Lord said this unto me, Return unto thy country. It was God's command. 
But Jacob, what? Needs to return to his country so that God can continue to work in his life. God will not work in the life of a person if a person will keep on holding on on those things that he has in his life that is not pleasing towards God. No. Jacob certainly was happy to get up from under Laban's control. But take note, it was God's idea that he need to go and he need to return to his own land. Remember here, Jacob forgot that God's commandment always involves God's enablement. For the will of God will never lead us where the power of God can protect us and provide for us. Amen. Amen. But again, Jacob's imagination ran ahead of his theology. And he was sure that Esau is coming to destroy him. In verse 10 here, we can see here God's care for his life. Amen. Remember, as Jacob reviewed the past for 20 years, he reminded God of the wonderful way he had cared for him. In every trial and burden that came to Jacob, God had been faithful and kind to care for him. Remember when he arrived at the house of Laban, all he had was only the traveling staff. But after 20 years of working with Laban, he is now a wealthy man. Amen. And do you think God will allow something to happen in his life verse 11 here we can see God's purposes Jacob wasn't only thinking of himself but he was also thinking of his family and God's great plan in mind as well Jacob's son would multiply and become the nation of Israel amen and through Israel, God would bring blessing to all mankind. The Savior, remember, would come from the tribe of Judah. Amen? From his wife, Leah. And die for the sins of the world. And also Paul would come from the tribe of Benjamin. From his wife, Rachel. Amen? To carry the gospel to the Gentiles. And that is the purpose of God in his life. And do you think God will destroy all, the, all of those plans just because of the anger of, any one, of one person? No, God will not allow that to happen. And one more thing here that we can see in verse 12, God's promise. God, when God will do promises, he will always fulfill it. Jacob reminded the Lord of the promises made to him at Bethel that he will what? Multiply his what? Seed. Amen? That God told Jacob that he would be with him and bring him back to Bethel, which is the house of God. And he would accomplish his purposes in and through him. God's promises. But again, we cannot judge Jacob. Because I believe there are areas also that we are guilty of this. But again, he claimed God's promises, remember God's goodness, and rested completely on God's character and covenant. Remember, no matter what circumstances we may face, or what fears may grip our hearts. We can trust God to be faithful to His character and also to His will. Amen. And lastly, I oh know, not yet. Testing. <laughs> Testing. Okay. Bigla nagising iboy. Huli. Amen. Point number four, 
Verse number 13 to 21, but we're not going to read most of that. Point number four, Jacob's gifts. Okay. Point number three, Jacob's prayer. And point number four, Jacob's gifts. Now, after those prayer of Jacob, now, we might think that it was really great. And it is, it was. But again, it did not bring peace to Jacob's heart. And what happened here? He decided once again to act on himself. Without the guidance and the word of God. You can see that in verse 20, it says here, And say ye moreover, behold, Thy servant Jacob is behind us. For he said, I will appease him with the present that goeth before me. And after a word, I will see his face. But adventure he will accept of me. Using those expensive gifts. Now, Jacob sent an ex uh, such an expensive gift. Because Jacob wanted to make it completely clear to Esau. Once again, as what I've said to you a while ago, that he did not need anything from him. That's the clear message there. And it also could have been a, what they call a carnal attempt as well. Remember, in verse 7, he was greatly what? You know what? Distressed. Greatly in distress. Because of fear in distress. Take note. Verse 20 here. I will appease him with the present that goeth before me. And afterward I will see his face. Peradventure he will accept of me. That's why this is a great uh, example of the principle. That for Jacob... That when all fails, pray. Pray. And as soon as he finished praying, what happened? It's really sad. He took up his own strategies again. I'm guilty with that. That's why when I was reading this chapter here, yung guilt grabe. Sobra guilt talaga siya Guilty tayo dyan. And this is our problem most of the time. We already have our own plans. And what we're doing is that we're just going to lay it all in, the, uh, in front of God. Lord, please approve. Which is wrong. We've already learned that faith is living without what? Skimming. But before we criticize Jacob, as what I've said to you a while ago, we have to examine ourselves as well. To see if we've ever been guilty of praying these things and depending on our own schemes and resources. Now it is true that faith without words is dead. That's true. But again, but Jacob's gift here wasn't a work of faith because God didn't, oh what, didn't command it. Amen? God didn't command it. It says here, true faith is based on God's word. Romans 10, 17. Everybody knows this, right? For God so loved. What? So, th <laughs> so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of of God. I, I think our pastor uh, uh, mentioned that in his preaching this morning. And whatever we do that isn't motivated by faith, according to the word of God, it is sin. Romans 14, 23. Romans 4, 14, 23. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For who whatsoever is not of faith is what? Sin, no matter how successful it may appear, it is sin. 
Amen. That's why, wow, laki ng building nila. Successful siya. Talaga? First fruit. No matter how successful it may appear, if it is not motivated by faith, it is sin. So verse 21, So went the present over before him and himself large that night in the company. So this, is, this gift is a good example of the way we trust in our own ability. Amen? Yeah. We have our resources, I believe in that. Because it was provided and given to us by God. But we have to take note that those resources must not what? Distract us in our service towards the Lord. No. Take note on this. Those are the examples that we trust in our ability to do the things and make things happen apart from trusting God. That's why we can sing the song, All to Jesus I surrender, all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily. That's why when Brother Moon played that song uh, this uh, morning, I surrender all, I surrender all, all to Thee. My blessed Savior, I surrender all. Unawa niyo po mga kapatid. But again, this is our problem. Often like Jacob, I surrender all the goats. If it isn't enough, I will surrender all my donkeys. And if it isn't enough, I surrender all my camels. But Jacob, listen to me, I've forgotten. He missed one. He need to surrender himself. That is our problem. Last point here. Verse number 30, 22 to 32. We can see here Jacob's blessings. When it comes to blessings, we really love listening that word blessings. But you know what? We're already blessed. Amen. Yeah. Verse 22, And he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two women servants and his eleven sons and passed over the ford, Jabok, or Jabok. I don't know how to pronounce this. It's up to you. It's up to me also. Chabo. Now, it was dangerous to ford the river at night, but Jacob would rather uh, cross that river risking for his fear against his brother. He moved his family to what he hoped was a safe place, forgetting that the host God's host or God's army was with him. He wanted something between his family and his brother's army. Jacob devised his own two camps here. Ay, dyan tayo magaling eh. Mag-device ng sariling plano. Dyan tayo magaling. Verse 23, And it took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had. And what happened here? After that, Jacob spends the night alone. And this was the night, his last night on the east side of Jordan. And I believe he probably spent the night in prayer. Prayer. God had to get Jacob alone. Take note. Before he dealt with him, while all those hassles okay, was with Jacob. Jacob could have been very busy with a different task. But once he was alone, God could command now his 
attention. Don't you know we need also quiet time? And in those uh, the quiet time, we can talk to God properly. That's why I'm always telling my wife and my son, pag nag-aaral ako, please, tahimik kayo. Kasi nawawala ako sa konsentrasyon. Kasi plans kasi, napaka-ingay. Be alone. May love na love ko yan. Okay. But again, he was alone. Now, in verse 24 here, and Jacob was left alone, and there, here we go, wrestled the man with him until the breaking of the day. Now, take note, Jacob didn't wrestle the man. And, but instead, a man wrestled with him. Take note, Jacob didn't start out one, one, wanting anything from God. But God here wanted something from him that has been bothering in his life. God wanted all out of what? Jacob's what? Self-reliance and fleshly what? Scheming. And came to what? Take it by force if necessary. Amen. I believe there are still uh, things that has been, has, been, uh, has been bothering us right now. God must be the one to remove it if you are not going to surrender it. God will come to it by force if necessary. But again, man wrestled with him. Now as the following verses show here, this is not just a mere man or just an ordinary man. But the special appearance of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament, also not the Christophany. Okay. The appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. Appearing, remember when the, the, the angel of the Lord appeared to Abraham? Amen. When he also appeared unto uh, Jacob, here in this uh, setting here. And also when the angel of the, uh, uh, the Lord's host appeared unto Joshua, it was the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, as we continue here, the question is, how did Jacob ever manage to keep up his struggle throughout the night? How did? Now, again, we don't know about it. But we know that his determination to hang in there was no greater than our frequent determination to have our own way and eventually win out over God. And that is our problem. That we really cannot release. We keep on hanging in there, holding it. But again, verse 25. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Now, as the fight progressed, as if it seems that Jacob evenly matched against the man. But again, the match is only in appearance. The truth of the matter was the man could have won easily at any time using his supernatural power. He can do that. That's why sometimes we can feel that we can contend God. A man or a woman in rebellion against God might seem to do well. Only in appearance. Amen. Only in appearance. The match is even in appearance only. But God can turn the tide at any moment. And it allows the match to go on for his own purpose. It's really hard. Again, it isn't hard to imagine Jacob working so hard and feeling he's getting the best of his opponent. 
Until here, finally, what happened here? The man turns the tide in an instant. And what happened here? Jacob must have felt defeated. Wow. Let's continue here. Verse 26, and he said, let me go for the day breaketh. The man here reminded Jacob that it will not last for a long time. And this is the only opportunity that he can ask something from him. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Verse 27. And he said unto him, What is thy name? After hearing those, that question, Jacob must have felt that sh uh, a sense of shame, admitting that his name means what? A con man, a sneaky, a cheater, a deceiver. Yet, that was who he was. And Jacob had to admit it. You know, God wants us to be humble and, our, and admit our mistakes in front of Him. Our God is a forgiving God. But we all want to name ourselves favorably. We can say, oh, I am, my name means strong. But again, God wouldn't allow Jacob to cover up his name. Verse 28, it says here, we're almost done, and it said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. Okay. Means what? God rules. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. Now, from this point on, he will be called Jacob twice, often. Now, as he is called Israel, apparently, there was still plenty of the old man left in Jacob. That's why here in verse 28 here, For as a prince has thou power with God and with men, and has prevailed. Take note, Jacob prevailed in the sense that he endured through his struggle until God thoroughly what uh, conquered him remember when we battle god you only what win by losing and not by giving up until you know you have lost this is how jacob prevailed just hang in there verse 29 and jacob asked him and said tell me i pray thee thy name and he said wherefore it is that thus ask after my name the man already know that Jacob already sensed who he was and he blessed him there you know the sad thing is most of the time is that we can only recognize the power of God when we are in need we can only uh, recognize his work in our lives when we are defeated that's our mistake most of the time. But again, it's not yet too late. Verse 30, And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Verse 31, And as he passed over Penuel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh, Therefore the children of Israel eat not of the sinew which rank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh, and to this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh in the sinew that shrank. Again, the first memorial is a name. That place, the name of the place is what Peniel or Penuel means the face of God. 
because he did know the name of the man who wrestled with him and he was the same one who wrestled Jacob all his life Jacob understood it was only by God's grace and mercy escape from this episode in this life no man should be allowed to wrestle with God and live but God was gracious and the second memorial here was a perpetual limp. Jacob would remember his being conquered by God with every step he took for the rest of his life. Take note. It's every one of, her, of us. We have weaknesses. And those weaknesses, according to um, I, the word of God, again, uh, I, cannot, I cannot remember the verse. Again, in, so that we cannot glory in ourselves, but to give glory to God. Now, if we return, there's always protection in our lives. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Amen. There's no need for us to fear, because God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power now in everything we do as a Christian as a believer we have to pray seriously another thing here those gifts praise God we have the gift of salvation that we can enjoy right now and that is the greatest gift that God has given to us and the blessings, blessings are not always material. Yes. Because material blessings are considered as the lowest. But again, the strength and the peace with God and the peace from God is a great blessing Amen. that we can get from Him. Now, as we continue to serve the Lord, most of us right now might be struggling, but I hope we can surrender it to God and allow God to continually work in our lives. And allow God to mold us to be a worthy vessel that is worthy to be used in His work and in His ministry. It is not yet too late. There is still plenty of time for us to improve and work with God with gladness. Amen? May God bless us. So we pray before I call our pastor. Lord, thank you once again for challenging us this afternoon. I pray, Father, that you would continue to bless our lives.